Well, geez, I wish I was out fishing right now. Welcome to sunny Florida, folks. Yeah, check out the uh, Jetty Wolf Ranchero Deluxe. I'm not sure if you can see it, but this is called the front yard and it's underwater. And all my uh, leaves and everything floating. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, what a wonderful day in the neighborhood. Oh yeah. While other people's boats get a wash, the Jetty Wolf, the Jetty Wolf remains nice and dry. I just wanted to show you the flooding going on. But one of the cool things around here in my neighborhood is all this water that's literally flooding my yard right over there, flooding the yard right here, flooding the yard right here, and I'm not even going to bother going into my backyard. All this water could be gone. There it is. It's Got a river running underneath the old Jitty Wolf towmobile. But uh, yeah, right after this is over, in 20 minutes, many times, all this water is gone. It is replenishing the Florida aquifer. This is just a Jetty Wolf moment. I wanted to kind of go over, while I'm standing here, the Suzuki. I have many of you out there that I know are Suzuki owners or even just four-stroke outboard owners that have followed along in my pursuit to keep my Suzuki clean, the anodes up, up to snuff, and you followed my uh, Ridlime flushing and you uh, maybe have learned something through that and that these four strokes, Yamahas, I know Suzuki's, I know have it, uh, possibly even Mercury's. You know, these four strokes either have many times like an oil cooler or like mine, they have a fuel cooler. And I mentioned it in my flushing with the Ridlime wrap-up at the end of that video. And it's really a shame if people don't watch the whole videos because I don't plan or script any of this out, so many times I do a wrap-up at the end. But what I've done, and it all started because of the fact that the engine was cutting off on me when it got hot. And that was because of some of the uh, salt water and the mud that got stuck in and baked, literally baked into my fuel cooler. Now my fuel cooler was a, an aluminum piece with water on one side, fuel on the other. And let me go ahead and let's go in the shop here and I'm actually going to show it to you, okay? All right, now we're inside where it's not so loud with the driving and flooding rain. But this here is the fuel cooler on a Suzuki. Actually, on mine, this is a brand new one right out of the package. Mine, original one, is still in the boat behind the vapor separator tank. And the reason I went through that whole flushing and then it went into filters and it went and it just kept going is because I felt that if my engine was getting so hot and the fuel cooler was stopped up that, you know, heat underneath those cowlings on a four stroke, a big four stroke is a bit I, I truly believe it's a big deal because I saw it firsthand. Alright, so here is the fuel cooler. 
and you can see what it is. It's a uh, machined aluminum piece. This is where water goes in, in and out, and fuel goes in here with a nipple and comes out here. And this was behind the bracketry of my vapor separator tank. This is the last line of cooling defense that you get before your fuel goes into. And mind you, Yamahas have this too. Uh, before it goes into your injectors. And it has, you have to cool the fuel because in the intense summer heat and hard running, what ha well, could happen, and the reason that they do this on these engines, is to keep gasoline from vaporizing. Also known as, a lot of people refer to it as, oh, it's vapor locked. Well, it's beyond vapor locked. So this is a brand new one. You can see here, fuel would come in here and it runs down the tube. And water is in here. And it runs down and circulates and water circulates through here so it's cooling the fuel and being that's aluminum I mean it's transferring the heat but as you can see the whoever makes this for Suzuki I'm sure they don't make it themselves the original one is still in my boat or in my engine but what I did and I explained it in my flushing video is I blew through here and no air would come out none so what I did is I drilled through this that's a piece of pressed in aluminum or something in there and I drilled all this out both ends drilled it out and then I got a longer bit and drilled down and you will not believe the crap that came out of here. And that's after five years of me, I mean, just running it in my barrel, as you always see me running it in my barrel and using the flush that's on the engine where it doesn't run the engine. And what I ended up doing is if I have one here, let me look and see. Yes, here we go. Smaller than this. I had a smaller one. Maybe it was this size. Maybe it was. I cut it off right here. I call this just a pipe cleaner brush. It's all bent up. I cut it off right here and I stuck it in my cordless drill. And I literally had to bore this out with the brush until it was super clean. Because if you see the way this is designed, water's going in, it makes a hard 90 degree turn, comes out, fills up the tube, and makes a hard 90 degree turn back out. Very, very easy place for debris, mud, salt, and everything to accumulate. So, if you're having an issue, and this issue went on six, eight, ten times for me, and that's where my 15 horsepower kicker kicked in, because this thing brought, my kicker brought me home. What would happen when this was totally clogged up, is fuel was going through here, and going into the VST tank, which sits right like this, and going in there, and on the way through all the intense heat from the block under the cowling and everything was vaporizing the fuel, vaporizing the fuel. And I'm telling you, it took me two months to figure this out with a lot, a lot of help and input from other people. So as this was going through, this fuel's vaporizing. So you go to, you go to start the engine and it might start with what's in the bottom of your VST tank sitting right here on the side of the block. Okay. And that's got a little bit of fuel in it. And it would get me 300 yards and it would conk out. 
and then never start again until this entire engine cooled down to a non-vaporizing condition. And at that time, I really wasn't paying attention to my engine temp. Now I watch my engine temp religiously. It spooked the living hell out of me. So guess what? This right now is my spare. What we did, me and my dad, is I plugged it just like this with good old JB Weld steel. This stuff called JB Weld steel. And it's kind of like the same stuff that's in there right now. now. That may be actually a pressed in aluminum piece of dowel or something pressed in. So this is an, an integral part of your entire fuel delivery system that no mechanic will ever tell you about except a slight few. And I had some good advice from a couple mechanics and even talked to one up in Amelia Island at one point. And he said, you've got one or two problems. You either got a fuel delivery issue or you got a vaporizing issue. So that sent me also to change out my thermostats while I was there. And you know, I'm meticulous about my maintenance and it still didn't matter. I'm going full bore all the way, all the way or no way. And I changed my thermostats. Then I changed out my low pressure fuel filters. Then I changed out my high pressure fuel filter, which I did a video of cutting it open. Here's the, uh, if you recognize this, this is the, uh, the bracket for that canister. And I cut it open to show you what looks, what it looks like inside. And I was quite amazed on a high pressure fuel filter. What, what is it? What does it do? What does it look like inside? Because we're all familiar with what that is, you know, the low pressures. It looks like an oil filter inside, right? Well, this one, the high pressure didn't. So then another thing that doesn't get changed out and nobody talks about is now, as I said in that video about flushing everything and all, um, and some other videos that it seems to be a big deal on the mercury, but this literally is the plate that holds this, which is a pressure regulator on the side of the engine underneath the Suzuki oil pan and water pushes and it lets X number of pounds of water pressure, I guess, go through there. And it sits right in there. There's the O-ring that goes on to that groove right here. So I changed that out. <clears throat> then just the other day, I changed out the water pump. This is the Suzuki water pump kit. You get, of course, all this and a new uh, keyway. I lost the keyway, believe it or not, in this garage. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> the keyway is somewhere on this floor. It's somewhere around here and I don't know where it's at. So I use the old one. There's my old plate. That's about two years old. Here's a thing of a uh, uh, little bit of an alert. When you get say from boats.net you buy this suzuki suzuki water pump kit for let's say a let's say mine like a 250 uh four stroke suzuki it comes with the new cup all right but on boats.net i kind of have a bone to pick with them they said oh well we don't see a cup in the picture so it must not come with one. Well, guess what? I went and bought one because of course I wanted to change out everything. So there's a new cup, stainless steel cup that the impeller goes in. When you buy one, yes, it comes with the cup off of boats.net. And now I have a $15 spare that I don't really need. Why would I need this? I almost was so pissed off. I was gonna call them up and say, I want my $15 back. I still may do that.
There is the O-ring that goes inside the plastic cup. There's a plastic cup, then the metal cup fits in. But there is, and you're not going to be able to see the, any detail, but there is a almost two-year-old impeller. It's really crooked, it's really bent, and it's really flattened out. And what did I get for all my work here? Well, this instantly fixed my vaporizing issue and my engine didn't shut down anymore. But I was running at 5,000 RPM before I changed pretty much all of this. And I was getting up high 170 degree temperatures. And I didn't feel that was right. Well, the water pump dropped me down three to five degrees instantaneously. So this is everything that I have done so far. This being the most important issue with your Yamahas and your Suzuki's. Yamaha and Suzuki are very similar, except for price. You know, Yamaha's, I swear, this thing would be made out of what, gold bullion or something if it was a Yamaha. Just the price of the Yamahas are very, they're very expensive engines. And that's from my experience when I went and purchased my Suzuki after pricing the same exact engine. And really the reason I went with Suzuki, one of the main reasons, is they have 30-inch shaft engines, and that's what my boat takes. I got a 30-inch transom, so I need an extra long shaft where Yamaha is building engines to go on their transoms. Because if you don't know this already, they own boat companies. Skeeter, uh, off the, right off the get-go, get they own Skeeter. They own, uh, let's see, what is the other one? Century, if Century's still around. So they own some transoms, let's say. I don't believe Suzuki owns any boat companies. They're not building it just for them. It's very easy to find a 30 inch Suzuki four stroke outboard, big one, 250 horsepower like mine. So that's a little bit of what I've done lately. And I know there's a few of you out there that are subscribers of mine that have now seen what I've done and have told me, and I've read all your comments and replied to your comments about trying to keep your engine as healthy as possibly can be. I sometimes say to myself, I'm more obsessive to keep my engine running at its peak and pay attention to every little detail than I am with my own body. But age is catching up with me. And I literally have had a dealer, and I won't mention them because I'm not into bashing other people's businesses, but another dealer here in Jacksonville that I will never deal with ever again, because when you're on the phone with them, the first thing out of their mouth was, Oh, well, if your engine's five years old, it's time to get a new one. That's the reason Suzuki has a six-year warranty. Because it's only going to last that long. And you need to come in and get a new one. And I told him, oh, are you giving away at half price? Because it's going to cost me about 20 grand. So I don't believe in the throwaway world. But many of these, got to remember, they're like dealerships for vehicles stealerships they're really in the business of just selling you new stuff because that's easy but keeping good mechanics on board employed with enough work that's too much of a headache and that's the reason why i made a little post on my community page about don't ever be in the business where you count on your engine your boat and your boat engine to keep you in business because the first mechanic that you talk to and the last mechanic that you talk to is going to say, two weeks, two weeks, two weeks. Really? Two weeks, I'm out of business. They must all be millionaires. They're all multi-millionaires because a simple job like changing this out or doing a water pump change out. These guys must be just millionaires because they will send you away they will send you away. Oh, two weeks for a water pump? How long does that take a mechanic? 
a skilled mechanic, really? How long does that take? Drop it off in the morning, pick it up in the afternoon, what's that, an hour's worth of labor? I cannot tell you how important this thing was. The symptoms are not obvious. If your engine is crapping out on you and it's acting like it's starved for fuel, and it's 110 degrees in the shade, in Florida and the water temperature is 87 to 89 degrees, and you're running at five grand, and then you pull up on a spot and you just turn it off. You can't imagine the heat buildup that's going underneath your cowling. And these are built in there by major engineers at Suzuki and Yamaha. These guys ain't stupid. They know how to do this and this is the reason it's there. And when this gets clogged up, you are so SOL, it's unbelievable. But only a few mechanics, maybe two, locally, even had this in the front of their mind when I told them my symptoms. Thanks for watching. This is just a little vlog on a major rainy day that's flooding my entire Jetty Wolf Ranchero Deluxe, Jacksonville, Florida. I'll see you on the next one.